Hello, it's Lou Collins. Today I'd like to show you how to use the Caves A6 stamp set from the Deep Blue collection from Textures. So I've created this stamp set with layering in mind. So it's almost as if you're down at the bottom of the ocean and you're looking up through from a cave maybe, through the corals up to the, uh, the top of the water, the surface of the water above. Now this just means you're going to have these sea creatures, uh, the silhouettes of them, the silhouettes of all the corals and plants and rocks and things, uh, but also some beautiful colours in the middle here as the light's coming through the sea. That's kind of my vision. So let's get started. Now first thing I need to do is create that colour in the background as my base. I'm going to use uh, Keisha Flamingo and Salty Ocean for this one. Maybe I should have chosen a more sort of sea themed uh, colour for this pink, but never mind. I'm going to use my Creative Craft Products stencil brushes just to stencil a small area. And I'm going to stencil around kind of around a circle here. Now I'm looking for a very light application because I want to keep the, the real centre uh, almost as white as possible. And I'm just going to keep working round and going bigger and bigger in this circle, getting larger and larger. I quite like that we've got the brush strokes there as well in the circular shape because it kind of gives that effect that I was looking for. Lovely, so I've left a white spot in the middle and I've worked my way out with the pink. Now I'm going to go with the Salty Ocean. Now this is a much darker colour, so I'm going to come outside of the pink and just gently start working it in to the pink rather than going directly to it. You could always brush off a little excess as well if you wanted to, but always working in these circles. So once I've got my outline done around that pink area. I can then come in with a larger brush. So this is just my basic creative blending brushes and I'm going to start working again round in circles. Now the beauty of this is you don't have to worry about perfection because we're going to have uh, silhouettes over the top. It is the sea. We're also going to be adding a little bit of water to it as well, some watermarks. And I'm going to bring my pink in and just blend through these two colours. So you've kind of got almost a purple appearing there as well between the pink and the blue. The most important thing is that we keep this white area here just in the centre. So once you've created an area large enough for your stamp to go around, and I think I'm just about there, I don't think I need to do a lot more blending. As long as you've worked in circles, it will look really good. Now just to finish this off, I'm just going to take a water spray and I'm just going to do a light spritz over the top. Now that's just going to give it kind of a mottled, stippled look as the water reacts with the ink. Not um, essential, but I really like the effect when you get up close and you can see it. So just allow that to dry off and then let's go on to the stamping stage. So for stamping onto this, I'm going to pop it inside my Creative Craft Products stamping platform and I'm going to peel off, first of all, the main, what I call the main part, so this silhouette here. Now I'm going to try to keep that white spot in the centre. So we can see there we've got the centre element here, but it's not directly in the middle of the stamp. It's kind of more up towards the top a little bit, so keeping that central as possible. And there we go. Now I'm going to fold my platform over and pick this up. This is why I work on a slightly larger piece of cardstock because I've then got the opportunity to move my stamp around to where I want it to be. Now with this, because it's one large flat stamp, I'm just keeping one part uh, stuck to the platform, lifting it up and allowing it to roll down flat just to ensure that there's no air trapped under this center piece. And I do that with any brand of stamp when it's a large piece like this. Now I'm going to go in with um, a green, first of all, a dark green, because this is going to be the first layer of the uh, corals and the rocks and things. So you can do this in any color you like. I just think green works with the fact that you kind of got seaweed and plants in there. So this is an oxide, so it's really juicy. And I am going over and just like, as I'm pressing down, just doing a little twist, tiny little twist a few degrees, just, there and then I'm going to just take a piece of kitchen towel and just remove the ink that's hit the center there only because if I press too hard with my stamping platform shouldn't do but I could potentially just risk 
and pressing that into the centre of my image there. Now again, I'm going to give this a very light spritz of water. This just means when I push this over onto my paper, you get that slight amount of spread and you actually get more of a solid colour. So bring this over and pressing it down all over the image, making sure every element, and you can already see the sort of effect that we're going to start getting. Now you can open that up. I'm not worried about these edges because I'm going to put another layer over the top just want the centerpiece here and that looks really good so now I'm going to clean off the green you can use a wet wipe you can do another spritz of water and use just a piece of kitchen towel or you can just take the entire stamp to a sink under a tap just run some water over it to clean it so just remove that now you're going to lift your stamp up because we're going to reposition it now what you may want to do is have a think about where you want your sea animals to go in a little while as well so I think I'm going to put this one the most prominent bit is this large leaf here so what I think I will do is let's put it this way so you've got all these choices you can twist it as many times as you like let's line that up around there there we go now press that down again, just lift the corner, make sure that's flat. Now I'm going to take a black, a nice dark black. And I'm just going to go over the image, all of this side. And you may want to stamp this a couple of times if you're using an ink pad that isn't as juicy as, say, a Distress Oxide. And I'm going to come around this edge as well. I'm not going to ink into those plants that come right in the middle. I'm actually going to take my little bit of paper and just blend those out. Just cleaning that stamp up a little. And there we go. Now I'm going to do my first impression with the black, but with the black, I often find that I want to do a second impression just to fill in any gaps, because unlike the Distress Oxide, we can't spritz this with uh, water to allow the ink to spread a little further. So you see, I just lifted that up, and do you know what? That is not too bad at all. I might just do one more impression, and again, I will just uh, remove the ink from those larger branches that were coming in. But you can see the layering effect that we're starting to get. It's really lovely. I think the blacker, the more solid black you can get this layer, the better. Okay. So again, just removing from these plants to keep that center nice and clean for the last layer. And again, press around all the edges, all that lovely detail in there. Perfect. Now what I do like, we have actually got a tiny little bit of the uh, plants there just in a gray, but that only adds to the dimension that we're starting to build up. Now again, give everything a clean, take it to the tap if you need to, as long as you air dry it, it'll be absolutely fine. Now we need to add our sea creatures. This is where it really comes to life. So pop your sea animals on there. In the middle, you can move them around as well. Have a play with the positioning. Now I'm going to go in with black with these again. If you want to substitute the black for a dark gray, a dark brown, a dark blue, absolutely fine but I would suggest use a really dark color because they are silhouettes you've kind of got the light just above them so you'd only see the shape of them and then look at that there we go so that is how the A6 caves stamp set works just one of the ways you can play with all the different colors that you've got in there and you can play with the different layering techniques as well different layering colors you don't have to layer at all if you just want one layer of the corals around or you could mix it and do four it's entirely up to you uh, have fun with this stamp set and you'll find more from the deep blue collection available on craft stash